In the state and local government arena, we have a broad array of users, and I would classify them in essentially two groups, external and internal. Obviously, in the external group are the investors and the creditors that actually use government financial information in order to make lending and investment decisions. Uh, definitely, I would include the municipal analysts and also the bond rating agencies within that group. But probably even a larger external user group would be the taxpayers who use information to assess accountability. And many times the information they're using is something that someone else has already analyzed and shared with them. In contrast, the internal user group are actually a part of government. For example, state and local government elected officials and their staff are internal users. And also, employees that are outside of the financial accounting reporting area are also considered internal users. So you can see by that that we have a very large group of users that are very diverse and they use government financial information to help inform themselves. Different users analyze reports in different ways. One of the most significant uh, challenges that the GASB faces is identifying common user needs. High quality GASB standards address a wide range of issues, you know, from overall financial reporting to specific transactions such as pensions, uh, retiree health care benefits, derivatives and the like. Uh, the bottom line is that, is that these standards uh, result in financial reports that reduce uncertainty in the user community and also increase confidence uh, that the user community has in the information presented in those reports. I think the GASB understands that users speak a different language than standard setters and preparers of financial statements and auditors of financial statements. They're coming at this from the perspective of someone who needs information to make decisions, to evaluate uh, accountability and financial health. And so we have prepared written documents like our user guide series, like plain language summaries of proposals, and we've uh, instituted seminars in, in a place where there really wasn't that kind of educational resource uh, that are geared toward what the information that results from financial statements means and where it can be found and how users can use that information to do the things they do uh, as a part of their professional life and as a part of their personal life as well. You know we have a broad spectrum of users that makes it hard to be able to address all users needs we try to weigh the cost benefit of information that they want. Does it necessarily have to be in the financial statements or can they get that information somewhere else? Is it nice to have or is it essential to have? We have a conceptual framework that helps us make some of those judgments. Is something, uh, is some information that they need recognized in the financial statements? Could it be described in the footnotes and would it be essential or is it supplementary information? And at each stage we go through and try to determine best we can are there costs associated with gathering that information and then what is the benefit of it? So it becomes a cost-benefit question every step of the way.